Kennedy's throw, Morgan's cross, and Hilaire scores superbly. I remember the game vividly, obviously, because I scored the goal, but I didn't, I didn't play that well. I got the diving header, and um, luckily that's what everyone seems to remember. It was at the Fratton end, and I remember him telling me that he, he, he thought his family were up in that stand, and in fact, in fact they weren't, so he, he didn't know where he was actually celebrating that goal. You know, fan, fans would have looked at it and thought, well, yeah, maybe £85,000, possibly a good deal, possibly not. But as I say, a sensational start, diving header. I was like, stiff. You know, that was the norm for me, heading the ball, uh, coming out of the far post and flying headers. And I said that, I said, yeah, Portsmouth fans can expect uh, a lot more of that. That's right. I think all the time Terry was at the Palace, I don't think uh, he ever saw me head a ball. Uh, <laughs> I, but I think that's a little bit unfair because I've scored seven or eight goals with my head for Crystal Palace. And uh, maybe it's because I'm so small, teams tend to ignore me. I think that was the only header I scored in the four years I was, I was at the football club after that. So, apologies. I don't think he had the afro then, so the ball didn't nestle in his afro, but um, yeah, great start for Vince and a, a, a great player for Pompey. I think, I think Vince, he'd been at Crystal Palace and he was one of that young generation under Terry, Terry Venables at Crystal Palace who were, you know, they were, they were named the team of the 80s and, and I think it all went a bit astray for Palace. They ended up getting relegated and I think, I think um, Vince had drifted off to play for Luton and that had been a bit of a disaster for him. I had, I'd heard nothing but good things. I'd kept close contact with Billy Gilbert and Billy said how great it was down there and um, I thought, well, let's have a go. <laughs> Vince was uh, was special. Um, we had two very good wingers at the time with Cully as well, but Vince was was something special. Always got Mickey taken out of him uh, about the quality of his crossing. It wasn't quite as bad as everyone made it out to be, as we all know. He was a hell of a winger. I know, you know, we take the Mickey out of him now, but he, he was one hell of a winger at the time. He was a key factor in, in, in Pompey having such a successful time in the mid-1980s. Vince on one side, you had Kevin O'Callaghan on the other, and, you know, they, they used to cause havoc. And whether you call it 4-4-2 or 4-2-4, it's irrelevant really in that sense. What, what, what those, both those players were, was they were both players who wanted to get forward and make things happen. On the half hour, it was once again Vince Hilaire who opened the scoring. Well, I mean, I was lucky enough to share a room in three or four years and never a dull moment. I don't think it was an urban myth to say that they, they went for a beer after training. Spent probably as much time in Lily Jays uh, as, uh, as he did the training ground as well as time went on. When he first came to the club, probably the quietest man you'd ever meet. Uh, would go home, watch telly, would know every telly program that was was on, and within six months, he was a chain-smoking alcoholic. That uh, that was six months with me in, in the room. So. And just minutes from the end, Hilaire got Pompey's third promotion. Now beckoned again. After 27 years in exile, Pompey are back in the top flight. Uh, he could cross a ball, he could score a goal, brave. He could put his foot in, and uh, obviously he got us a few penalties as well. You know, if, you, if, you're, if you're a winger and you're committing a fullback and you're getting into the penalty area, you're going to commit a defender into making a challenge. And, you know, well, if the defender touches you, I think you're entitled to go down, don't you? So when you're coming out the dressing room with a team and the manager's wishing you all the best and the players are shaking each other's hands and you're walking out the, the dressing room before a game with the referee and the linesman and your penalty taker shouts to you, don't forget Vince, if they go near you in the box, drop down because I've never scored too many goals. You go, all right, deal. <laughs> it gets the referee thinking, I'm not going to fall for it. So sometimes it did, I did have to, to um, take a few uh, licks, as they call it, inside the box before I'd get one, one game for me. Vince Hilaire was given a hard time in a match which saw nine players booked in all. He did actually say to me, the only time he's going to get in the Hall of Fame is if he's dead. Off the top of my head, I think he's the fifth player from that team to be inducted in the club's Hall of Fame. So well done, Vince. I know he's moaned and groaned for so long. Why hasn't he been in the Hall of Fame for about the last four or five years? But uh, see, patience, patience pays off, Vince.